is happening with my hair? Oh, I didn't rub in my dry shampoo. <laughs> you how to make this sign. So for this project I'm using a scroll saw, which if you have one you're all set. And if you don't have one you should go listen to episode two of the podcast because I sit down with Lizzie who's like the coolest human ever. She's um, who inspired me to get a scroll saw. So we talk about like how to get one, how she first got into it, and I really think it's one of the most approachable power tools because it's actually more like finesse. It's not a bunch of like big hefty buildings. So if you're new to power tools, it's actually a really great one to start out with. So if you checked out that episode and you're like, but I don't want a scroll saw, that's okay. I'm gonna also walk you through the steps for how to create this sign without any power tools. It'll be a little more 2D, but you still get the same vibe and the exact same look. It just doesn't involve power tools or wood. First things first, you need to create a template. So I used canva.com, which is a free graphic design software. You can like click and drag and add text. They have tons of fonts tons of like sizes of templates. So basically I just opened up like a document and like played around with some fonts till I found what I liked. So if you want to do your own design, just go to canva.com, make a free account and like start playing around with it. If you want this exact design, you can download the free template, which is on the blog post. So once you've created your template, you can actually go print it at like Staples, like on an engineer size print for a dollar. But I just printed it at home using printer paper and like taped it all together. Um, both options work totally fine. In order to do that, I used a free website called Rasturvator and you just upload your image and you can pick whether you want portrait or landscape orientation and also like how many printer sheets like wide and deep. So if you want this exact size, the template also has the printout for that. Once the template's done, it's time to build the sign. So I just started with a blank wooden sign from Hobby Lobby. You can also build your own sign if you want to like make a frame with a back. I did something similar in my DIY fall pom-pom sign video. So to cut out the lettering, the first step was to attach my template to a piece of MDF board, which if you don't know what that is, it's basically like a ton of sawdust glued together to form a board is like the best explanation. So I put a piece of contact paper down first and then used some spray adhesive and just glued my lettering down to the board. So when I go to cut it out, my template's right on the piece. So if you're not using a scroll saw, what you want to do with your template at this point is cut out all of the letters right around the letter, cut them out with scissors out of the paper. Then I just fired up my scroll saw and started cutting around all the letters. So if you are new to using a scroll saw, I would absolutely recommend you go follow Lizzie at um, the House of Timber because she's amazing. She has so many good tips for how to get started and like what blades to use and all that. But just a few quick tips for scrolling. Number one is that you want your tension not all the way tight. Like part of you thinks this is a saw blade, like it needs to be cinched in there. But you want to give yourself a little bit of give in the blade so that when you're turning corners, it can kind of adapt and bend. Another good tip for scroll sawing is that you want to use one hand to kind of push the piece down onto the table and the other hand is kind of going to steer and push the piece into the blade. So obviously be very careful of your fingers and wear all the required safety gear, like especially a mask if you're using MDF because that sawdust is like real gross. And then to do like the middle of an O, basically you're going to take a drill and you're going to drill out a little hole that's wide enough for your blade to fit through. Then you just take your blade off on one end of the saw and you can feed the blade like through the hole that you've made, reattach it, and then you're able to cut out the middle of the letter. So once I was all done cutting those out, I just peeled the template right off. It peels off super easy since it's contact paper. You basically made a sticker. I just laid them all out and spray painted them with two coats of a matte black spray paint. You wanna make sure to get all the edges of your letters too, not just the front. Um, so two coats I found worked really well, making sure that I got around the whole letter. So I really liked the matte black spray paint for this project because it kind of looked like ink and it kind of looked more like written 
So once those are dry, it's time to glue up. Basically, I just spent a little bit of time arranging the letters to get them exactly where I wanted. You can measure or you can just eyeball it. So if you're using the wooden letters you cut out, you are going to glue them down with wood glue. So when you're applying wood glue, you want to put enough glue to where it kind of sucks the letter onto the sign. If you don't have enough, it's not going to really give you a good bond. Um, if you put too much and it's like squeezing out all over the side of your letters, just take a damp q-tip and run it along that corner and kind of scoop up the extra glue before it dries. I also like to put a couple dabs of crazy glue fast dry wood glue. I literally love this stuff so much. The good thing about this is this glue is like basically super glue for wood. So it dries in like six seconds and gives you a super good bond while the regular wood glue takes time to dry and that results in like a really strong bond. Okay, so if you're not using a scroll saw, take the letters that you've cut out out of your paper template, you're gonna arrange them the exact same way, and then you're actually gonna Mod Podge them down. I would recommend using a foam brush or a little foam dabber like this. Basically what you'll do is turn your letter over and dab some Mod Podge onto the back, then you're gonna stick it down and again take more Mod Podge and dab it onto the front. So you want to dab and not scrub or swipe because once your letter starts getting saturated, the ink can start to rub off and smudge. I would recommend a satin Mod Podge because that way if you get it outside of your letters, it's not going to be like glossy and weird on the sign where it like pops around the letter and kind of looks messy. Okay, then you're going to let it dry. So if you're using Mod Podge, you're just going to let your Mod Podge dry. If you're using wood glue, you're going to let that dry. If you used scrolled wood letters, once your wood glue is dry, your sign is done and you can hang it up. If you're doing the Mod Podge method, there's one extra step to make your sign look a little more polished and sophisticated. Just go over it with some black paint. I really like this chalkboard paint because it's satin and then a little brush just like this will work. And then you're just going to paint onto the letters, just tracing them basically with paint. Just paint over each letter and then once that dries, you are done. So let's take a look at the finished sign up close and then I'll show you how I transitioned it to fall and dressed it up a little bit. So I hope that you liked this video. If you did, you should subscribe so we can be friends and you can stay up to date with all my fun and fresh ideas.